Hello, Needham, and welcome to What's My House Worth, the most fun real estate show on the Needham channel. My name is Rob Tickton. This is Ryan McDonald. We are realtors with Hawthorne Properties, and we are happy to have you with us as we go over all the sales, Ryan, for the month of? April, Rob. That is correct. April, fortunately for our viewers, a little <laughs> bit busier than the two months prior, so we're not going to have to talk quite as slowly as we had the two previous episodes, Ryan. Yeah, and less meaningless information. Right, and nobody wants more meaningless information. Right. So uh, before we start giving you some more meaningless information, let's take a look at the uh, sales data for the month of April and uh, see just what we're dealing with here. And Ryan, as you kind of look over the numbers, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we finally have some homes to talk about. 17 sales in April, Rob. We had 22 in April last year, so it's, you know, similar to that, and, but up from the 10 of March and the single digits of February. Uh, the prices are good. You know, we've got our average sale price of 1.26. Percentages are very solid, both above 99 of list and original list, which is more important. And our average sale market, Rob, 23? Yeah, that's quick. What? 23. I mean, that is really, really a quick turnover for the month of April. Yeah, it's nice to see the 17 sales too after yeah. having just a total of 19 for the two previous months. So uh, things start to pick up a little bit in terms of uh, tur turnover, in terms of how's, how's it selling. Certainly things have been picking up all along in terms of pricing. Yeah. Um, April home sales, uh, this is as we start to see that trend go up a little bit. And uh, even though 17 seems encouraging, it's the lowest number there over the last six years, Ryan. Right. I mean, I, and I think it, it's, it's encouraging because of the two months that have led up to April. But you're right. I mean, looking at past Aprils, it's 17 is nothing to really jump up and down over. Um, I think it is a function of inventory, mm -hmm. but it's you know it's still it's still a positive. I mean, 17 sales versus 10 last last month and eight month before. So R right, or you could say that 17 is something to jump and down for if you're a seller in the market when you put it up against our next slide, yep. which is the average sales price. You have less inventory turning over, but it's it, it's happening at a much higher clip. I mean, well, first of all, it's a little bit of a weird graph right. anyway, right? Like that's not what we typically see. I don't know what was going on in April of 14. No. It must have been just an odd month there. I, I'm sure we had a good reason for it at the time, though. Yeah, no question. We always do. Right. It might not be valid, but it's good. Yeah. And uh, April 18, though, wow, 1256. And that's because we had some uh, some biggies this yeah, month we that we'll did. be getting to later in the we show. We did have some big sellers, and I think it does speak to your point, Rob, when there's there are fewer fewer houses to, to choose from and the same amount of demand, then you're going to see some, some inflated prices and that's, that bodes well for Needham sellers. That's right. Um, buyers a little bit of a different story. Yeah. Although there is a lot of inventory on the market right now in that six and seven and eight hundred thousand More so range. Than, than we've had in a long time. So yeah. that's, uh, that's encouraging for the starter home side of things. Yeah, no question. Uh, all right, let's take a look at these sales now. We're going to start low, work our way up in terms of uh, sales price and our first um, well, our first few listings are, are pretty close to, to 128. This one's no exception. St. Mary, of course, right off the central. The avenue. As you, uh, right off the avenue, correct, as you head towards uh, 128. This one, Ryan, in need of some uh, TLC, but that's a pretty pretty low sales price, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I, it is. It's 550. I mean, it's possible that this house, this property could be redeveloped. This is the, the only owner that's ever, that's, it's, it's a one owner home. No kidding. Say. Yeah. So, um, Property, pr the building and property to be so sold as is. So don't expect any landscaping done prior to the sale of this yeah. one, I guess. Well, how about that uh, pricing by the listing agent? So, Spot on. Yeah, listed for 550, seller for 550, nice, tidy time frame of yeah. just seven days. Uh, that was a 10,000 square foot lot too. So even if there's no house on there, I'm not sure it would sell much less than that number. Right, That's that, That's that. you're right, it's approximating its land value. And, and, and same goes for our next listing, which uh -huh. is 15 Avon Circle. Agreed. This is. Uh, a location. I, to be honest with you, when it came on the market, I I wouldn't have expected it to be on for 79 that, days. Look, that's what I said. It's surprised by the 79 days. So I did. I, I I looked into it. Talked to some people involved in the deal. And I think that the house, uh, as it you know, it just probably didn't show as no, as didn't. fresh as maybe the pictures in the original listing and the sunshine is. It was just a little bit tired. Um, it's a good location. I, I like you. I was surprised that it. it it lasted that long, and also that it sold for for. I mean, I thought the six ninety nine was a good price for. Yeah, it. agreed. Um, six fifty seven is more of its land value, so you know it, it is a little bit on the small side. It's only eleven hundred, just under twelve hundred square feet. But I mean, it looked like it had everything. You can move right in, and, and that's a you know that's a, that's a nice location. Well, never mind the fact that it's a ten thousand square foot lot in Broadmeadow. Mitchell. Oh, mi excuse me, Mitchell neighborhood. Yeah, no, so, agreed, agreed. I mean, you're not going to get much less than that in, in that school district. Um, 
Okay, next listing is uh, 8 David Road. Um, David is kind of kind of embedded in that corner yeah. there, Ryan, between Highland Avenue and uh, 128. This one had a, uh, a new roof, but but needed a little bit of work, I guess, on the inside. I mean, in this one, Rob, I, I, this one go for 670, and Avon at 657, even though this is a slightly bigger lot. Well, yeah, it's 5,000 5, square feet I, But bigger, still, but yeah. that 5,000 square feet is <clears> abutting 128 for all intents and purposes. I, I would rather have Avon at 657. Um, yeah, this one definitely has more square footage uh, by by a lot. So this one's eighteen hundred. The other one's eleven hundred. True. Change. I'm just. I guess I'm looking at, uh, at from a land perspective or from uh, an investment perspective. Yeah, yeah. But I understand what you're getting at. But yeah, I, w I mean, I guess th I just was a little bit surprised. But I was a little surprised by the Avon transaction. Yes. So then I was as I'm surprised by that. I'm comparing it to the next one, and I'm like, hmm. I think what so. you're trying to say is your surprise carried over onto 8 David. Right. I couldn't contain my surprisedness. Well, the question is, did it carry over to 18 Plymouth? Well, I guess it didn't. Yeah. Right? Because the uh, next listing is 18 Plymouth Road, which is your uh, deal of the month. So, Ryan, go get them. Yeah. I mean, at the risk of being labeled as opinionated. Here we go. <laughs> um, I, Too late for that. I know. Boy. When we, uh, when we saw this house, Rob, I, I, it was at six ninety nine, which I thought the price was good. Um, it's a la it's in the latter district, yep. grudgingly, even though this listing does say the highly desirable ladder street neighborhood. Well, I think either one is acceptable, okay. but go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so looking at homes that sold between seven twenty five and seven seventy five in the last the last year, there's twenty one of them. F only four were smaller than this one. One of those was a teardown. You know, the, from a, a lot size perspective, it's seventy four hundred square feet. It's the second smallest lot among that group of homes selling in that price point. Yep. Um, it, it, it had old systems, you know, it was just a little bit tired inside. One of the bedrooms is really, really small. Yeah. Nine steps from the, from the driveway to the house. Confirmed? Yeah, I counted. All right, good job. Uh, I, I just, I just, to me, I, it, it, it's 699, I was like, okay, but then seeing it go at 755, I mean, that just speaks to what we were talking about earlier about how there just wasn't a lot else to choose from. And, and while this location is really good, and that ultimately I think is what put this over the top and got it the price that it did. Mm -hmm. I just feel like if there were other options when this buyer was looking, or these buyers, presumably, because there must have been more than one, that I don't think we would have seen this get to that number. So I think the seller benefited from all of those circumstances because dollar for dollar, you know, compared to other houses that have sold for a similar price point, mm -hmm. this one doesn't compare towards the top of that list, in my opinion. Well, but, if, you, if you are going to see a premium, I guess it's going to be on a street like Plymouth. Yeah, yeah, your streets, location right? bails you out, ultimately, when you because you can do a lot to the house to make it Really, really nice, and, and you know. And then I think, um, then you have you've bought into a solid location, and it's a good investment. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. Well done. Well played, sir. Here's a question for you. Okay. If you pulled a <clears> hundred, a hundred Needham, let me start that over. If you pulled a hundred random Needham residents, yeah. and asked them where Ivy Road was, <laughs> how many would know the answer? Uh, I would. One, two, three. 12. I would say more than that. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, because you have a whole bunch of people that live, you know, in the Broadmeadow area or that exit Needham via you know, Great Plain Ave and drive by Ivy. Okay. Um, so I, I hear what you're saying. I think David might be a more of an obscure road. Hmm. But Ivy, yeah, I mean, there's what, like three houses or two? Yeah, maybe we can do um, some kind of... Uh, so for those who don't know, oh, yeah. Ivy is kind of nestled, you know, right by, you know, between like Harris and, and Great Plain. Yeah. Um, just by that little patch of trees that are just kind of there. Yeah, it's a little dead end. Right. I think one interesting way to describe it is the the backyard of our next listing, 12 Ivy Road, abuts the backyard of a house on Wilshire Park. Right. Which you wouldn't think that. But they probably can't see each other. I don't know. Yeah. Because well, there's a Wilshire. Inclined? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, there, there's trees back there. But anyway, okay, so. you're right. It, it's It's not a. You know, there's not a lot of turnover on Ivy because there's not much to turn over. Right. It's a, it's a it's a pretty good little location, though. Right. What do you think I did the second I saw the square footage? You went on uh, public record right. to verify it. Right. And what do you think it was? Um, I think it was probably 1986. It was 1684. Ooh. Oh, so finished basement. They it did, oh, yeah. but it listed the source as public record. So I'm always looking at that, as, yep. as any of our viewers w will know. Of course. Um, but you know, this this is an interesting house. I mean. You know, it goes on for eight thirty nine on the market for three days. It's a you know you want to talk about a nice secluded little little spot. I mean, there's no there's never any traffic on Ivy. It's just not <coughs> I mean, you would unless you're delivering a newspaper. I mean, there yeah. really isn't anything to do there. Well, even um, then, you could probably throw it from yeah, Great Plain. Yeah, you probably get it from Great Plain too if you have if you have any sort of wrist action on that paper and, right. and good wind at that time. Right, and your car is facing the right way. Yeah. You're not going to get that out of the passenger um, window. No, agreed. But um, yeah, so I mean, eights. 
Okay. And, and I mean, it was redone. You know, it's a 2,000 square foot house. I mean, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2,000 square foot. Well, yeah, take. allegedly. Almost. But. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Uh, not too Shoot. far away is 107 Old Farm Road. And this one, you know, a little surprised, or some people might be surprised that this wasn't a deal of the month. When you, when you just really think of it in terms of it's an 1,800 square foot ranch selling for $937,000. Okay. That's a lot of money. It is. But how do you get that much over asking 35 days later? Um, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. That's, that, to me, is what, is what jumped off the page. But single level living is, I mean, there's a market for that. No as question. Know, as we know. And, and this yeah. is updated single level living. So, and it's a great neighborhood. It is. So it, it, you're, I, was more, I was more interested in seeing that it went so far over asking a month after it went on the market, which you don't see typically. Yes, unless all of a sudden it's just, you know, the stars align and right. you get multiple buyers, right. even awesome. though you didn't get any for, for a month. And we've definitely seen that happen. We have. Yeah. We have. Well, we haven't seen a lot of our uh, Tuscan-inspired homes. No, no, not this side of the pond. But uh, our next listing is one. It's Seven Broadmeadow Road, and it was Tuscan-inspired, and it was uh, certainly, certainly a unique house. Yeah. Um, this one was, it's just assessed for 721000 How about that? So taxes are going up a little bit. Uh, a very unique kind of layout to this house, very uniquely decorated. Yeah, it had that it library took a, with the ladder. Exactly, yeah, and just a kind of a winding uh, path from you know the upstairs to the downstairs and back again, but big um, lot. This is also on the corner of uh, Broadmeadow and um, Greendale. Yeah, is it right on the corner or is it yeah. one in? Oh, it no, is right I think the it is on the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Twelve thousand square foot lot though. Yeah. Which is uh, that counts for something, right? Yeah, sure does. Yeah. Um, our next listing is actually half the size. Okay. Lot size, uh, but it, yet it's my deal of the month for the for the buyer. buyer. That's right. 36 Melrose Avenue, Ryan, that's my deal of the month. Were you surprised to see this is my deal of the month? Or do you remember me talking glowingly about this house after we walked through it? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I, think, I think what was said was like you, that they maximized the utility of the house. Yeah. I mean, it was a renovation and everything was done very well. Well, and how nice. about this? How about this? We were just talking about a listing that was on the market for 35 days and got 50 grand more. This one was on for 10 days and got 60 grand less than list price, which mm. I thought was interesting, that you would be willing to give so much as a seller with such a short time period of being on the market, especially when this thing hit the market prime early spring. Uh, what I liked about it was I thought it had a great layout. This was basically a rebuild from the foundation up. Um, layout was great, four beds, two and a half baths. Um, you had a finished basement, which we can talk about <laughs> in a little bit. Um, a lot was small. Like I said, the one thing working against it is a 6,000 square foot lot, but you wouldn't have known it because the backyard, as you're looking in the family room out on the backyard, was, was a decent size. It, it's a great location. I just think it's a really good value, really good value for 124. I liked it at 1299, so I think it's a great buy at 124. Um, I'd be curious to know why it went for 60 grand less than what it was listed for. Perhaps something came up uh, at inspection, but um, all in all, it's, yeah, it was my kind of runaway winner for uh, deal of the month, Ryan. And so, and to go back to the point I made before, which was um, when, when you're in the basement of this house, one thing that we noticed was as you walk through the basement, there were these, you know, these two steps, one, two, and then it was just the wall. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. The best. <laughs> the best part about it was there was a guy there working on it, and I think you asked him, where yes. those steps go? And he looked at you like, he's like, I, uh, know, I have no idea. I don't know. But I, they, they go somewhere. Yeah, so. well. I don't know. Maybe so, when you get the keys to the house, right. you get the keys to the... Uh, but I think that your point about the yard appearing larger, it's because the house is reasonably sized for it, yeah, right? Yeah. So well, it's yeah, not like it's an oversized house on the lot. It's, 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 it's tailored nicely to the lot size and to the neighborhood. So I think that's a, that's a nice job done by that. Other neighbor. interesting thing about that house, if we just pull that picture up one more time, is uh, you see you had that, that wall, that stone wall along the front and the sidewalks in front of that, but to get to those stairs to go up yeah, to the house, this part bugged me. you had the opening in that wall was to the right of that tree. Right. So if anybody so you, comes over, they got to go all the way to the right side of the house. You park in the driveway, you walk past the house, then go up the steps, then walk back. Yeah. Yeah, I would have probably done something, something about that. But. Yeah. But anyway, you know, what yeah. are you gonna do? Listen. Maybe, maybe for that extra sixty grand, they would have done that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. take that. Yeah. Okay. Well, good work. Listing. We've uh, gotten through our deals of the month, and okay. nobody's been hurt, so that's always a good sign. <laughs> maybe some feelings along the way, but well, we can't. We can't help that. Isn't that always the case? Right. Two fifty three Rosemary Street is the next listing, and uh, we saw this house, but I, we saw it a few years ago, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, this was this was sold by by our office. 
Yep. Uh, this house has sold five times since 2009. No. That, yeah, that's got to be some sort of record. Has it been that many? Yeah, ranging from a sale price in the threes, two of them in the threes, to the, the 920 when it was newly built, mm -hmm. then a million twenty six, and then now 1240. So it, 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 keeps, it keeps going up. Right, right. But the million twenty six was in 13. So good for them. Yeah. For, you know, five years later, selling it for, give or take, $230,000 more than what they bought it for. Yeah. That's a pretty good return. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is on Rosemary. It's not on the one-way part of Rosemary. This is across Highland Ave uh, as you get more towards the uh, uh, central. And soon to be in the school district with the newest Needham School. Yeah. Soon to be. Currently Hillside. Uh, all right. Over in Broad Meadow is 74 Thor Thornton Road. And, Ryan, we walked through this one as well. Yeah, and I believe I, I that thought, was documented. Um, that's right. Correct. How so? Well, all those cameras are in the house. <laughs> oh, right. That was that was in my comment. I was going to yeah. get to that too. Oh, sorry, I ruined it. No, well, not really. Very I like, modern. I like house. the way you went in on one. Yeah, it's good. Um, a lot of twists and turns in there. It too. was a neat. Unique floor plan. It was neat. It was one of those houses where you walk through it on the broker tour. You saw the list price. You saw the house, and you thought, yeah, this is going to go, mm -hmm. and it's going to go for more than what it's listed for. Mm -hmm. What was eerie about it, which you just touched mm -hmm. on and it went right over my head, was that there were cameras in I think just about every room. Right. So you felt like you were being watched, yeah, and, and you might have been. Pretty sure you were. All right. I um, know. It, it had two separate garages, which you can't really tell from this picture, but down below in the back, remember they had two garages, one, yes. and, and they were, if you if you pulled out of them at the same time, you would definitely run into your garage mate yeah. leaving leaving the garage. But That's good, good observation. Yeah, good communication when you're trying to get out of those garages. Don't be too you know too much in a hurry. Well, I think just good communication in general right. was some good advice. Do you remember what I was doing as we were walking through the house with all the cameras? Posing? Yeah, I was smiling yeah, to them, right. just in case. <laughs> right, you can right. never be too friendly. Yeah, and I was hoping they were watching you because I was stealing the silverware. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, it's funny that you say that. For, um, anywho, Two Gerber Circle is our next listing. And uh, how many people would know where Gerber Circle See, is? See, the only reason I know this is because this was right, you know, not long after moving to town. I remember this, this development going in in 2006. Oh, do you really? Yeah. So it's it's <coughs> off of Honeywell, kind of as you as you get <coughs> to Central. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I, I just have a I just have a, a, a memory of these houses going up, which is, you know, it doesn't seem like it, it's that long ago, but it is. It's 2006. So yeah. Yikes. Well. Yeah. But I mean, this I mean, and also I thought this it's selling for one one in 2006 wasn't a was a pretty good number. Yeah, one for the for the who? The the seller. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the buyer ended up doing okay too. Exactly. This had. Did you notice this had tile in both the kitchen and the dining room? No. That's something you don't see every day. You certainly don't. The kitchen and the dining room. And it was very shiny. That's all. All right. Well, oh, I did notice that on the floor in the kitchen. Yeah, it was dark tile. Yes, right. Because right. at first glance, I was like, hmm, is that wood? And then, no, it's not. It's tile. Right, but the kitchen is one thing, but it was the kitchen right. and the dining room. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick up on the dining hmm. room. All right. Well, we'll easy, to, easy to clean. We'll have to revisit that yeah. after the show. After we visit Lot B on Webster, which you and I collectively don't have any idea where it is. Well, well I think what we would do, if we were looking for Lot B in Webster, we, we would probably go somewhere along Highland Ave and just, just go different ways. Right. Well, you'd go one way, I'd go the other. Until but we, how would we know if we found it? Well, uh, you're not going <laughs> to. Unless you have the picture with you, that, you have no idea. That's the only way. Yeah. That's the only way. But but since the description said that it was uh, walk to cricket, okay. we can assume it's yeah. probably close to cricket. Yeah, we use some deductive reasoning to yeah. find out over so there. So we can walk the same direction from Highland. <laughs> but this this one's pretty inexpensive, I would say, for I new agreed. construction. Agreed. Right. And a big lot too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so 3,800 square feet for one four. I mean, that, I mean, well, actually, that's that's it. That's 3,800 square feet. All right. So you just don't have the square footage that you, you, you're accustomed to seeing in new construction. Yes, but you could so probably... So it's probably two levels. Yeah, and even if it's three, you got a fourth if you want to. Right. Um, so okay, good. There you, there you have that. Yeah, so that one's new construction. The next one was built in 2004. Mm. This is 138 Fairfield Street. And uh, in the description of this next listing, it did refer to it as an A-plus location. Ryan, I, listen, I like Fairfield. Yep. I do. But I'm not, I just, I can't uh -oh. throw out A pluses. No, you can't. I can't. Unless, well, you can unless, unless I'm, right. Well, I mean, generally, I, I can only think of like two or three streets right. that I'd be willing to throw it out because. Right. You it's can't just, not. just be tossing around A plus. Yeah, it's, it's. Unless you're, you're, exactly, unless you're right. standing squarely entrenched on Fair Oaks. Yes. Right. So, I mean, that's like the only place where you can just say, all right, this is an A plus location. Right. And, and nobody will question it. Right. right. So, you're, you're, Putting yourself out there with that A plus. Um, don't get me wrong. Fairfield's a great street. I love great it. Great Broadway Meadow neighborhood. Agreed. Convenient to a lot of things. No question. It's just when you start, you start just doling out. You know, I think people are doing that today with the use of the term goat. 
You're yeah. seeing that a little bit too. That'd free. be greatest of all time. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. So it just it, it, when you start to throw it out too much, then it, it dilutes it a little. Right. Bit. It's like breathtaking, right? <laughs> okay. From from Seinfeld. Right? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, but I'll give this one credit though. This goes out of the gates in January. And yeah. it goes off the market in five days. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. Well, that's also, a, you can tip your cap to the listing agent. Yeah. Priced at 1499 sells for 1490 So yeah. that's well priced. Yeah. Uh, so. Next up is, uh, we're going back to new construction, 43 yep. Hewitt Circle. And I, you know, who's going to say the things that we need to say about this house? <laughs> it would be you or me. Because we walk through it. I'll, you know, I'll start and I'll say, I thought it was, it was a very nicely finished house. Uh -huh. I, I, I liked the house. I thought it fit the lot well. It's a big lot. Yeah. Um, and there was some town land behind it, so yep. you could more or less do a straight shot to, to Mills Field. Um, but what we didn't like about the uh -huh. house was what? Well, well, first, before we get to that, I too liked a lot of, of the interior finish of the home. I really liked the coffered ceiling in the master bedroom, mm -hmm. which was, it's hard to describe. It wasn't your typical coffered ceiling, just the way they patterned the actual coffers. It was unique and it was cool, and I thought it was really nice. Um, there's some nice woodwork in there, a lot of angles in the room. Yeah. Which, on, which in some rooms I like, some rooms I thought was there maybe too angly well, yeah, for but furniture. It, but it was almost like uh, because it was on the cul-de-sac. Yeah, they, they tried to uh, position it around. Yeah, but I, you just can't help it when you go up the stairs or when you look out any of the front or you walk out the front door, you are just staring at that massive radio tower. Yeah. And it's it's you just have to be okay with that. Yeah. And I think that's that's you know the only thing. I mean, it's a cul-de-sac. It's, it's a nicely done home. It has all the things that we mentioned. Are reasons to like it, but I think that's something, and you can never right. change that. It's always going to be there. Right. So if you're okay with that and you get used to it, hey, then great. You yeah. A, you got a nice you house. You got a nice house on a, on a big lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So our next listing is 11 Colby Street. This is uh, well, also going to be a nice house. At least that's what you would say about it at the point in time that this picture was taken, because mm -hmm. it wasn't done. It was put on as a pre-construction, yep. maybe mid-construction, but uh, during, uh, sure. yeah, and, and that was a, you know, one nine, yeah, at 11 Colby Street, sure. it, as long as you're going to finish the house correctly, right, that's, I'm fine with that yeah. list price. Yeah, I mean, the, the land was 750, which in, in hindsight is a pretty good number. Yeah, you're yeah. Not, you're not getting Colby 10,000 square feet for 750 today. No. So that's, you know, so that's a good spread for, from a, you know, getting it at a good price and selling it at you know, just under, well, 1845, which is a good number there. And like you said, yeah. assuming it's finished to, to, to support its, its value, then that deal looks like it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I was, in their, sides. I was in their mid construction and you could tell they were doing the little things at yeah. that point. Three finished levels there. Okay, so we've got two now, not one, but two out of our 17 sales over $2 million. Yeah. Yep. Um, our first one is 142 Bridal Trail Road. And before everybody's, you know, spits out their coffee by that four days on market, <laughs> right. just you know, let the world be known. It was actually 154 days on right. market, then they went off the market. For the holidays. And it, actually it also initially went on for 2.495. Right, so yeah, so this one, this process was, was a little longer than it looks on this slide. Um, house was built in 2000, 2001. Uh, finished house sold for 1.353 in 2001, so a, a nice little bump from that. Um, you, but you know, this is the outskirts. Look at the wait, but look at that. Does that chimney just look gigantic? I, I didn't notice that till just now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it could be the camera angle. Probably, part of it. but still. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it had some extra brick. <laughs> yeah, but um, nice okay. home. Yeah, so so a lot of a lot of uh, bells and whistles. Leaving that up, leaving that up there for a second. So it did say on the listing sheet, um, central vac unit and master jacuzzi tub need repair. Mm -hmm. So I mean, thoughts on that? Like like I, you know. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about necessarily all the time, but if, if I'm getting a listing that these two things need to be fixed, aren't you just saying fix it? So you have a couple less things that you have on the, on I mean, the listing sheet? I, I mean, mean yeah. maybe it mattered, maybe it didn't. We, we, we've gone, we've kind of gone the other way with this before, is that when you put something on the listing sheet as a disclosure, you're almost removing it from the equation, or you're seeking to. You don't always get out from under it, yeah. but you're, you're attempting to remove it from the negotiation process. Say, look, you, this is almost buyer beware as it pertains to the jacuzzi and the central vac. Agreed, but and, and maybe more so for like a six hundred thousand dollar home, right? You know, but for you're asking over two million dollars, and you're saying, oh, by the way, this doesn't work and that doesn't work. Like, if you're going to command a number that's over two million, I mean, and again, I, I'm not saying I'm right. Right. No. You know, this, it's it's. But an these are the things for discussion. I mean, yes. It's, it's it, there. There's. I can understand both sides of it. I see what you're saying at this price point. 
just give us, you know, just take care of these things for us and fix it. Yep. Um, and who knows? Maybe maybe that's what maybe ultimately that was done. Yeah, maybe. But um, yeah, and we don't necessarily what was wrong with them either. Right. You know, it could. Well, what? it could it couldn't have been an easy fix. Yeah, I think Probably. I think your point's a good one at this price point. Putting them on there as a disclosure is not going to remove them from the conversation as it would with, you know, there's a house there's, that's priced that to sell to and, and it's getting yeah. six offers and Agreed. people are willing to overlook it. That's all yeah, I'm saying. I, yeah. See how reasonable we can be if you, you, know, you come around yeah. and you think, you know, think nice. things through. That's nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I would agree with you. Thanks, yeah. Ryan. Thanks. It's nice. Uh, our last listing is our big seller and it is 140. Beard Way. Did you notice, Ryan, yep. that this house just sold yeah, two years ago? Yeah. So we, we talked about it. Right. Just just 24 months ago, it sold for 2.15. Right. And here we are, you know, but, in 2018. But I don't know if you remember. I don't. The, the, I can tell you this, right now. This house was on the market in 2014. Mm -hmm. And it was priced at that point at 2.475. Yeah. And we went in there and it was like, it, it, we always talk about this. When things are, are priced, above where we believe they're valued. Your perception, no matter how nice the house is, is always that it's like, eh, for that price, I kind of want more. Yep. And that's how I was feeling. But then on top of that, I don't, you may remember this, you may not, the listing agent at the time, which was not the listing agent that just sold it, was asking everybody in there who was coming through on the broker tour, which is open to all brokers, basically saying, do you have a buyer in this price range? As, almost as if to say, if, Why are you, you, here? if you don't have a buyer in this price range, Take your lunch and beat it. Because that's how you felt when you're walking through there. It's like, I'm sorry, I was under the impression this was a broker open house. I don't have my two five buyer with me, but you know, thanks for pointing that out and making me feel like I'm completely inadequate. You can't remember this. This had to be in your notes. It was. Oh, okay. I was gonna say that's such a weird. <laughs> but, then I, but then I but then thinking back, I do remember it. And yeah, I remember walking right. out of there and saying, boy, geez, I wait, you know. Didn't it didn't really feel like like I, like we were yeah, worthy. We were worthy of walking through it. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, it didn't sell anywhere close to that number, and he didn't sell it. So, so um, it's it's just one of those things yeah. that sticks with you. Good. Listen, we'll touch on everything on this show. Well, one other thing I want to talk about: Beardway, four houses in the past year that are either have turned that? over or are turning over. Yeah. There. So, I don't know yeah. what's going on in Beardway, but times they are a changing. A new look. Okay. Uh, speaking of new look, we have a new listing picture of the month. So why don't we take a <laughs> peek at that? Yeah. Uh, our May champion right. is this guy. Yeah. And by this guy, I don't mean the guy on the TV. I mean the guy watching the TV. <laughs> right. Or either, either, or the yeah, person it, taking the picture. Just, to me, it shows you how comfortable you can be in that room. Yeah. So, like that guy looks like he could be asleep. I guess. I that, mean, he's been there all day. He's he's comfortable. That couch feels a little sticky to me, Ryan. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. especially on a hot day. Yeah, it just it really shows the versat versatility of that wall. But do we know different what, things you can put there? See, for some reason, I feel like he's watching something about Scientology. I can't really put my <laughs> finger on it, but what is that? I don't know. I don't know. And that's I an infomercial, know. right? It, it could be. It could be. It's just it always it, it always grabs me. Like he just can't take the two seconds to say, all right. Hey guy, turn the TV off and just get up for a second right. and take or, a picture. Or how about just the photographer could just duck down a little bit so you don't <laughs> see the guy on the couch. But then beyond that, it still has to make it to the listings. Yeah, so it's really, I know. It's 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 outstanding. Yeah. Keep it up out there. Good work. We're pulling for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, market snapshot. We're. Uh, do we typically do the listing picture before the market snapshot? You know, I, I thought about that and I decided, eh, I don't care. All right. I'm in. Thanks. Market snapshot. Uh, what are we looking at as we stand here today, Ryan? Consistency. Well, f certainly with regards to the listings. Uh, the number 57, it's actually a little bit higher, but there's a lot of a lot of condos, yeah, Ryan, that are trying to sneak pose them in there. as single families, but yeah. I weed them out, Ryan. <laughs> right. But look at the jump in average list price I from know. a year ago. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty hefty hefty jump. You think? Um, but the 96 single family homes under agreement, we're going to have a lot to talk about the next few months. It's yeah, always fun. Nice. We are getting into the lot to talk about months. Well, and we're due, certainly, after yeah. the last three months. Right, including this one. Um, good point. Okay, so, Ryan, if somebody wants to know what their house is worth, or if they have any other questions and they want to talk to the two guys that host What's My House Worth, how would they get a hold of us? Uh, they can very easily, Rob, call our office. That's 781-707-6564. They can also email us at rob.ryan at hawthornre.com. Remember, there's no E in Hawthorne. Hmm. And uh, you can always follow us on Twitter, too. There's a lot of info on that little get up. That's at Hawthorne underscore WMHW. Great job, Ryan. Thanks, Rob. As always. Yeah. That'll do it for this episode of What's My House Worth. Thanks for joining us. We will see you again very soon. There you go.